This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. Today's show brought to you by Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia Routes 11 and 15, Almost Wharf online at sunburymotors.com. Ford Kia Hyundai, best in new inventory, great pre owned inventory with the Sunbury Motors guarantee. And a terrific service department that backs it all up. Before we get to Tony Knopp, our play-by-play call of the day, in case you missed it, and most of America did, Spain won. To take the corner. Drops it back. The storybook ending might be here. Who knows? In this unpredictable Women's World Cup. Yeah, well, after the U.S. exited, a lot of people decided it wasn't so predictable, unpredictable anymore. They stopped watching. But that's all right. That's a different story. It's around the world they're watching. Out of, thank goodness, out of Maui, and now with us, Tony, that had to be some experience getting out of there. Yeah, that's that's a story for another time. It was uh, it's way too close, and it is far far worse than what's being covered right now. There, uh, right. I talked to the sheriff on the way out, and he was saying the death toll is going to get it's going to get around a thousand people. It's just uh, pray for those people. It, it, buddy, it happened so fast. There was no warning. There was no way to get a warning out. There was no. It just. I mean, it was thirty feet a second. And we just watched it. It was it was crazy. Yeah. Well, thank goodness you're out of there and back home safe and sound. So. No, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys. Oh no, I was thinking about you the whole time. I kept thinking the whole time, like Tony, 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 because I'm watching this. It becomes exponentially more personal when you've got a good friend there. So. Okay. Uh, it was. I mean, it, the videos are 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 detailed, but the the thing that was the craziest was the exploding cars, boats, and then the two gas stations blew up. So right. when we got evacuated and we're driving out of there, you know, racing get away from the fire, you, it sounds like a, a war zone. It's just it's, there's stuff blowing up mm-hmm. everywhere. And, you know, buddy, the thing that was the weirdest is that, you know, I'm an athlete. I, I'm used to high-pressure situations. I couldn't feel my hands. My hands mm-hmm. got cold. It was the weirdest thing. So but I digress. That's another conversation. I appreciate it. I know. That'll, that'll be yeah. a private conversation you and I have yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, exactly. Exactly. Uh, the Pac-4. <laughs> <laughs> we called okay. it. We said this. You've got to have a clip somewhere where we said USC is going to leave the Pac-12 and it's going to fall apart. We've been saying this for years, you and I, on okay. the air. Yes, I know. I know. But, it, again, you and I are told we have no contacts. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a different topic for a different day. Because <laughs> oh, we're not going to sit there and list all the people we know. Uh, but this happens in USC. And yeah, it's not Colorado. USC is the pipe piper that makes all this happen. Yeah. But what made the Pac-12 presidents? And again, let's go back to September last year. You and I talked about the $50 million per school that George demanded, George Klyovkov. But it comes yep. from the presidents, and you and I knew that 30 was on the table for ESPN. What made them think that they could get that much more? So, it's a long answer. Um, what happened with the Pac-12 started in 2011, and if you look back through the entire time frame, is this USC is this when would, Bill Moose is this when Bill Moose said yeah. everybody needs to have an equal share? It was Bill Moose and Larry Scott when yep. they signed the three billion dollar deal, and it was the biggest deal going at the time, and they were going to roll out the Pac-12 networks. And if, and if we look at that, and let's we can get into that in detail, um, in summary, and then we can go into detail of how this fell apart and why they thought they could get fifty million dollars. Um, the person who comes across actually as, as kind of the the worst bad guy at the end of the process is USC. It's Carol Holt because. Yep. They believed at the time when they had Texas Tech and they had four schools looking to join. And Carol Fult blocked it. 
the same university that then left 18 months later blocked four new schools coming in. And when the four new schools were coming in, those were the numbers that were being put in front of them, were 45 to $60 million, right? And, and the argument was made that we don't need them, we can still drive that kind of, that kind of dollar amount, especially if we can get our, um, our major national brands back to prominence. And that's, that's USC, UCLA, uh, Washington, kind of Oregon. I know Oregon likes to think that they're nationally prominent, but you know, right. you're not meeting anybody in New York who's watching the Oregon game. And so that's where the number came from. And so it's just like anything else. So to try to put it in a layman's terms as much as possible and how it's been explained to me a lot by people who are in the room, right? Um, and, you know, Mike Bone's a friend. Um, he was, he, thank goodness for him. He, I'm, not, I'm not standing up for anything that he is accused of doing. I don't know what that is. But he was part of the reason that USC got out of this. When people, uh, when their house depreciates in value or something happens, they just have a hard time understanding or appreciating that that's what it is now, right? There's, there's an old saying that the market is the market. Um, it's much like how we're looking at, you know, Penn State grad Saquon Barkley saying, I should be getting historical running back numbers, and the market's coming back and saying, that's not the market anymore. And so he's holding out. That's what happened with the Pac-12 presidents. They just have this, this psychological disposition that, well, no, that can't be real that we can't get 50 million and 30 million, which is the number, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you know it better than I do. I think the Big 12, when USC was going to poach the four teams after Oklahoma and Texas left, was, was around 30 million, right? It was like yes. 27 to 31 million? Yes, yeah. yes. So they were, you have, a, you have a group of very powerful people who nobody says no to them, sitting in a room saying, wait a minute, we could have just bought those four houses for $30 million, and we thought that was nowhere close to enough money, and now you're telling us that's all we can get? No. Right. We need 50 million. And going back to what you said about Bill Moose, so I'm going to bore the listeners for a second unless they care about this, but in 2011, Larry Scott signs this deal with um, the, the $3.5 billion deal, biggest deal in sports. He's going to roll out the Pac-12 networks, even though he has no carriage rights. He completely blunders that. Larry Scott makes $50 million to essentially crater a hundred-year-old conference. But mm-hmm. Bill Moose sits down at the table with Larry Scott and the rest of the team, and UCLA and USC come, and they do what everybody has done with every league that's formed in the past. And they said, look, we are the stocking horses here. We are the biggest brands. We need a bigger share. And, and anybody can sit there and say that doesn't seem fair, but it is fair. It's not any different than in the Big Ten, right? Rutgers shouldn't get the same share as Penn State. We just know it, and people know it. The English Premier League was built that way, around the top five teams getting more money. And the NFL, thank goodness for the Maras, or the Maras and the um, Roonies and, and the original owners, because they were the same way. Yep. New York and Green Bay were driving all the money, and they were taking more, but they were making sure everything was taken care of. So Bill Moose, who, for your listeners, will recognize him from um, hiring Scott Frost in Nebraska, um, he, he was the guy at Oregon that kind of helped them come to prominence under Bill Knight's time. He hired Michael Audie, and they got a little more prominent. He is the AD at Washington State at the time, and he comes back and says, no, everybody should get an equal share, and we want to build our sub-brands into national powerhouses. We think Washington State should be a national name. He honestly believed this. And so he demanded and got the teams to vote and the presidents to vote to get the same amount of money to Washington State that goes to USC for football. And he takes the money, and he spends $8 million on Mike Leach every year, and he builds a ridiculous stadium that nobody goes to in Pullman. We talked about this. I believe that was the day that USC was gone, right? Because at the time, USC is under um, restriction from the NCAA. They've got the yep. sanctions on them. The team sucks. Lane Kiffin had been fired a year prior. Um, they're down, and now they're getting kicked while they're down. It was a matter of time before we got to this point where USC said, okay, this isn't going to work anymore. This isn't the SEC. This isn't the Big Ten. I mean, the Big Ten has – how many nationally prominent brands? You know, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan. You have a lot of nationally prominent brands. The Pac-12, um, people on the West Coast may not believe this, but I'm sure your listeners would agree, you really don't have much. You, Arizona basketball, UCLA basketball, USC football, used to be US, UCLA football, Washington from time to time, you know, Oregon from time to time. Nobody cares about the rest. Nobody, nobody's staying up late mm-hmm. to watch Stanford play, you know, Arizona State. No. And, and that's what happens. And, and, and so you have these chancellors and these presidents saying, hold on a second, <laughs> three years ago, you're telling us $30 million is nowhere near enough, it's going to evaporate the Big 12, and we're going to go take four of their teams, and now you're telling me I have to accept $30 million? No way. 
Right, right. Exactly. I mean, and that's exactly right. And that's what it comes down to. Now, and, and I'd like to point I've never, to my knowledge, I've never met Carol Fultz. I do know what her reputation is, though, and she is, quote, not a shrinking violet. In other words, she's a very, I mean, she has a backbone to her, and she has opinions. She does, and, and she's done a great job for USC. That's the important thing yep. here. In the end, everybody goes back down to the money, and that's what happened here. You have, I mean, if you think about how ludicrous the timeline of this and how this happened is, It is a case study in selfish idiocy. You had these 10 member schools. This is back before Colorado, Utah joined. These 10 member schools who spend decades demanding an equal share with the national brands, demanding that Oregon State basketball should get the same revenue share as Arizona basketball, demanding that USC football needs to share their money with Cal, who has some of the worst football facilities in the country. They are not even spending it. And you spend decades saying this. You crater your own conference fighting for this. And then the minute the conference looks like it's on shaky ground, Oregon and Washington, the two schools who believed they were closest to USC and UCLA, take a cut rate share to join the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. So you literally spend decade saying, I am worth exactly as much as these two schools until Kevin Warren and Carol Fulton and everybody, the big kids, get involved, and they say, you're not. And you can either take what you're worth, because the market is the market, or you can go play in the Mountain West. I mean, and, they took the long, right. and they took the long-term play with the next contract where they're going to get a, a, an equal share down the road. That's what they're counting on. Uh, yeah. Apple, Apple offered... 23 million, then kicked it up to 25. Yeah, I don't think plus, people plus. realize, Tony, how tough a negotiator Apple is. And they are, again, let's go back to the term shrinking violet. That's not Apple. No. So, what, what's fascinating about Apple and all of this, and what's fascinating, I mean, and to get back to the share uh, piece for the listeners, Stanford and Cal said they take nothing in their first year in the ACC. So you went from cratering your 100-year-old conference because you demanded every single penny that UCLA and USC got to, I'll take nothing, I just want to be on the team. That is shockingly idiotic from two supposedly prominent universities. Aren't you think tanks? This is, this is, you guys have a, you have a graduate school of business at Stanford that's internationally prominent. Couldn't brought somebody in to help you out with this one? You ended up with nothing. I mean, talk about buffoonery. And then you went and publicly uh, picked yourself out to the ACC who said no. I mean, you're, the, yep. you're supposed to be the Director's Cup champion, right? So Stanford has won 26 of the last 29 Director's Cup. This is the who wins the most national championships across all sports. Because Stanford dominates in the Olympic sports, and they always have. Two, you're going to play in the Mountain West? Yeah, I mean, how does that look for recruits? You know how we were going to USC and UCLA and Arizona? Uh, we're going to Boise State now. Yeah. Who wants yeah. to go do that? Yeah, let's go to Fort Collins. Have a good time. Yeah, enjoy uh, it. So the crazy yeah. thing about the Apple point, so to your point with Apple is, uh, one thing that's getting lost in all this is Apple doesn't just make up dollars. If they didn't get this deal, they're not done. Mm-hmm. They're not done. They have budget set aside, and they have identified this as a way that they want to continue to build in their live events portfolio. So you better believe that the Big Ten's talking to them. You better believe that the SEC's talking to them about streaming rights, about how do we work around contracts so we don't end up in a position like the ACC is. Which, by the way, we've been talking forever about that grant of rights. How excited is the ACC about that grant of rights right now? Because without it, Florida State is long gone. And Clemson's following them. Well, I've I've said this two parts to the grant of rights. Number one, if it was so easy to break, why are Texas and Oklahoma paying fifty million each between yeah. grant of rights and exit <laughs> fee to get out of the last right. year of the deal? And right. number two, 
Florida State's been grumbling about this for 18 months. If you can't find it in 18 months, the key sentence that can get you out of it, it's not there. It's not there. And 2036, that's 13 more years, my friend. You've got a long way to go, Florida State. A long way to go. And the numbers Uh, are stark. It's a $120 million exit fee, and the total media rights over 13 years involving Florida State is $500 million on the grant of rights. They would have to negotiate an incredible sweetheart deal. You're talking $500 million when it's all said and done to get to 2036, because every Florida State home game, if they just break it and go, would all revert to the ACC. Yep, every single one. And so you know that Apple, who knows people that we don't know, is involved in every one of these talks, yep. every one of them. So what the Big 12 did that was so smart is they went and hired the mega players. They went and hired William Morris. For the listeners who don't know who William Morris is, William Morris Endeavor, um, William Morris bought Endeavor. Endeavor was Ari, um, Ari Emanuel's firm. The listeners who watched Entourage will know who Ari Gold is. It's that <laughs> like, yes. he, he called in. They called in the hitters. Brett Yarmark showed up and said, I'm not going to goof around with this. I'm going to pay the people who can get meetings I can't get. And we are going to turn this into a power conference. And he did a great job of selling to the universities what that share was going to be. And now he's sitting great. He got Colorado back. I mean, look, Dion's only going to be there for two or three years. But it's a sure. good win to get Colorado sure. back. They were originally a Big 8 member. And you get Arizona basketball, which really helps with Texas leaving. It plugs in that, that rival that Kansas mm-hmm. needs on the basketball side. But you yeah. and I both know this is all about football. None That's of basketball all. doesn't even come up in the conversation on this. Well, what's interesting, and your mark has nothing to do with what I'm about to say, but if you notice, where is the grant of rights filed for the Big 12 where you get kind of that kind of corporate relief that you need? The grant of rights for the Big 12 is filed in Delaware. Yep. Which is, yep. you know, and a, lot, okay, a lot of people don't realize that. That's that's where it's filed. It's in Delaware. Okay, in Delaware, so now, which, is where, which is where my business is incorporated. For yes, the same reason. That's exactly why I brought it up, because I knew that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there are reasons why you do that, right? Yeah. There are reasons why yeah. a business does that and incorporates in Delaware. So, It's corporate protection. Uh, it's very difficult for the states to get involved, because... What gets lost in a lot of this, where the one thing that shocked me, where I was a little bit wrong, um, I'm wrong a lot, so I'm not defending myself, but remember we talked about this, we said the biggest problem Oregon and Washington are going to have are, uh, it's going to be Oregon State. Because Oregon, yeah. and, Was- Oregon yeah. and Oregon State are tied at the hip, just like Washington and Washington State are. It's been pretty well known that Washington State wants to move to the, to the MWC, right? They're more local to it, you know, Idaho's right there, they, it, it just right. makes more sense for them. Um, but Oregon State didn't. Oregon State is a powerhouse in baseball. They don't yep. want to move to the Mountain West. Yep. Nope. And now what? They Somehow Oregon got away from them. Somehow the legislature allowed Oregon to separate from Oregon State. I'm not that surprised with Cal and UCLA just because Cal has shown that they don't care about football. Right? They've made it pretty clear that football is just not going to be an investment for them. And for the listeners who don't know, Stanford, Stanford Stadium used to fit 90,000 people. It fits 35,000 now. I mean, they just blatantly yeah. came out and said, we're going to cut the attendance and half people aren't coming. Right. Right. Well, in fact, that's where, when it was 90,000 seats, they hosted the Super Bowl. They hosted the Super Bowl right. the team. All right. 49ers. So, yep, 49ers beat the Dan Marino's Super Bowl appearance. They beat the Dolphins. So right. right now, Roger he, Craig. Right, right. Who should be in the Hall of Fame, by the way. Oh, um, yeah. So what now... For Oregon State, Washington State, Stanford, Cal. I know Rick Neuheisel, well, who's very passionate about the Pac-10, 12, 8, whatever. whatever, because he grew up in it. He's coached in it at two, you know, at at three different, you know, two different places. So it means a lot to him. Is there any way in a package and a merger they can survive and at least keep the Pac whatever name? Yes, but here's the problem. Um, the, the, the chip that the PAC has is that they are still considered a Power Five conference. And they're still in negotiation going around about automatic bids in Power Five conferences. Um, and there's the Rose Bowl. The thing that gets lost a lot here is the Rose Bowl. The reason this all happened is because this was really the last year the Rose Bowl 
had the ability to say, I want it to be, you know, Big Ten, right. Pac-10, right? That, that, act, that part of the contract expired after this last game. And now it's going to make it easier that the Rose Bowl is basically saying, look, we're part of the CFP now. That tradition is not going to be a part of what we're doing anymore. Right. So, you know, the problem is we, we talk about this a lot. We talk about major markets, but then we talk about the, the actual traction that people have in a major market. And so the schools that are thrown around pretty regularly are kind of like the mid-major that want to be bigger, the Fresno States, the mm-hmm. San Diego San States. Diego I mean, State. I would challenge – I would challenge anybody in Pennsylvania to even point to me on a map where Fresno is, right? I mean, we know where it is out here. I used to drive through there. But right. Fresno, you know, they, they use a lot of loose numbers to say, well, the entire valley is technically Fresno, therefore we have, you know, 600,000, you know, mm-hmm. fewer homes signed mm-hmm. up as opposed to 200,000, but it's not. I mean, it, it's a really wide base that they're trying to get to. Uh, Boise State. You know, schools that you would know if you're watching late-night games, but they're just not nationally prominent. So the biggest problem that they have and why they need, why they really need some kind of merger with the ACC is the, the bid to the CFP eventually. They don't want to become a group of five school. The problem, for your listeners uh, that may not know, is that, you know, the ACC, unlike many conferences, actually has fairly interesting academic um, academic requirements, and mm-hmm. Washington State and Oregon State don't meet it. It's the same thing as the funky uh, NC State thing. Like, NC State could never go to the Big Ten because right. they're not uh, AAU, AAU or AUU or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're not licensed. Yeah. And so there's Washington State and Oregon State, they could never make the case to get them into the ACC because they're just not prominent schools when it comes to, you know, the academic side. And then the one that's really lost in the wash here is Arizona State. I mean, the number five market in the country, they, it's more populated than just about anywhere now. It's growing faster than anything. They should be a superpower, but they just can't stop fumbling over themselves. And now where are you? Right? You're thinking, man, we've had some hard times at ASU since Jake Plummer left, and now we're in the Big 12? What the hell just happened? Yeah. Well, the next time we talk, I want to – something that is lost in this is that Networks have paid out so much money for rights. There is yeah, a limit done. as to how far you can go, which yep. the Pac-12 found out, because ESPN desperately wants to keep the NBA contract and they want to keep the college football playoff contract in some form. You know, at least have the semifinals, the finals, maybe an opening round. But see, I want to get into the next time we talk about these network entities trying to make sure that they they balance their books while also making big bids on rights and how they prioritize who is a must have versus nice to have you know it's going to you and I talked about this right buddy it's going to come down to what the NFL and the English Premier League did right there's, yep. there's haves and there's have nots and if you allow that have and have nots to get too wide well have not start to disappear and you start to create super conferences which is this looks exactly like the english premier league where the top teams just eventually broke away from 100 years of tradition and created the english premier league right and so we're eventually yep. headed towards what it seems what you what you said years ago on the air right uh, we're all in a 64 team conference and You've got your mega conferences with your your divisions and your playoffs and your national championship, which in the end, to me, seems like the most logical, you know, endpoint. Anyways, I, I played a non-money sport in school, so I went to USC to play volleyball and basketball. Basketball is a money sport; volleyball is not. Yeah. Those football players, I was friends with all of them. You remember many of them. Carson Palmer was in my Bible study. I knew Barry Zito. Yep. Chris Claiborne was my lab partner, and he yeah. got drafted seventh overall. Yep. They are there to study football. And everybody hand-wringing and saying, oh, well, this is an academic institution. You can make just as much money, have just as much impact on the world, and, and have a great vocation in football as you can in anthropology. It is a job. So there, this, this hand-wringing about, I can't believe USC is going to fly all the way across the country to, why not? If they're going to end up being scouts or coaches or working on the business side of an NFL team, that's what they're going to do. The Philadelphia Eagles staff flies across the country on the weekends. They balance their work with needing to do that. Isn't college for that, to prepare your your vocation for the real world? 
So I think exactly. there's. Uh, I think we've got a couple of things to talk about, but I'm on the other side of that. I think these football players, this is a good thing for them. I, I am too. I, I think at the end, it's in, it's not going to be as complicated as people think. And there's a way. There's a way no. with the other sports to make it work, my friend. Oh, yeah. The fact that you're safe and sound is, and your family is safe and sound is all it means to me. But it is, man, that went fast, didn't it? <laughs> oh goodness, yeah. I enjoyed it. And next thing you know, we're going to be talking after you guys pound out West Virginia, right? You got them in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yep, two weeks from Saturday. So I think I'll I, go to I cannot wait Saturday. to see your quarterback. This is if you guys have a quarterback, this could be your year. Uh, you're gonna like him. All you're right. gonna like him. You're gonna like him. Okay, my friend. Always a pleasure. I cannot wait until the next conversation. All right, buddy. We'll talk soon. Tony Knopp. I know we ran over. All right. But it was either that or talk about Matt's kid cutting the lawn. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think this was the much better conversation. I don't know. I got a text from Lisa that says she'd rather hear about her. No. <laughs> Call the janitor. What about Luke? What are you talking to this Tony guy for? <laughs> Come on. I want to hear about how he cuts the lawn with fake toys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but you know the point he made about Washington Washington State is spot on they think like we are this major brand but they got in they they look, they took the cut rate because they knew that was the best they could do short term is a long term play for them and they're look they're really good brands but they are not Notre Dame Notre Dame is still the big chip in the game, which gets the full rate. And believe me, I'm excited about having Oregon and Washington. I am. Like I said, I get on the plane, and when it lands and the players and coaches all walk off, I follow them. I don't really get too concerned about how long the trip is. All right. Uh, Neil Kulong next half hour. And... uh, And the best bunts laid down by Aaron Judge. No, I'm just trying to get his average up. Was he hitting 280? For 40 million bucks? No, senor! No, senor! No, senor! All right, you're on News Radio 1070 WK. Okay. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. And today's show brought to you by our good friends at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia. Routes 11 and 15, Hummel's Wharf online at sunburymotors.com. Ford Kia Hyundai, the best in new inventory, great pre owned inventory. With the Sunbury Motors guarantee and a fabulous service department backs it all up um, every step of the way. That way, when it comes time to make your trade in for your next SMC vehicle, you got one that's in great shape. It is all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors, Kia Roots 11 to 15, Hummel's Wharf online at sunburymotors.com. And uh, Matt will let me know when we get Neil Kulong here. Get him on the show. If you're wondering about for Stanford, Cal, Washington State, and uh, Oregon State, obviously for them it's now a question of survival. Um, They will go through this year, the four universities, and they will get about $21 million in the last year of the Pac-12 contract. So what are the options now that something like the ACC uh, is off the table? Because four schools, I mean, they didn't sit there and have a formal vote. They did. They surveyed in making phone calls and said, hey, found out four weren't going to vote, so they couldn't get it passed. Um, so what is the Mountain West payout? And... 
what does the American conference pay out? And the Mountain West pays out about $5 million per school with their deal. And they have their deals with Fox and with CBS Sportsnet. And also, yeah, they're rarely on over-the-air CBS, but, the, for example, the Mountain West Championship games on over-the-air CBS in basketball. And I believe, I think in football they carry it, too. Next is the American Conference, and the American right now is paying out $7 million per. And that is a longer-term contract. The Mountain West contract runs out in three years, and the American Conference contract with ESPN, which you know for the American was a really good deal, uh, I think has seven more years to run. But the American has been hemorrhaging schools to the point where... Um, where they've had to replace them. And because they've had to replace them, they've replaced them with not exactly... I mean, it's kind of been a musical chairs because, they, you know, they're the ones that lost Cincinnati. They're the ones that lost Houston. They're the ones that lost UCF. Uh, and... That's... I mean, the group of schools they have now is not exactly a home run, with all due respect to them. They, they all play fine football. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, I mean, when you're bringing in, you know, Florida Atlantic and East Carolina and UTSA, you're like, eh, you know, it's it's not must see TV. Um, and they have to find a way to survive. Now, can you work out a merger, and this is what I brought up with Tony, with the Mountain West under the PAC, put a number name, you know, we'll just say PAC-12, just go with it where it is right now. Can you merge with the Mountain West and get to a PAC-12 number? And by the way, if you were to bring the four in to go with the with the Mountain West, you'd be the PAC-16. Because that's what they have. That would get them to 16. Hawaii is in the Mount in the Mountain West just for football. But you've got to, But again, you've got to come up with money to do this. Does Apple want to jump in and carry that at 25 million, which was their latest offer? Even going to the Mountain West, if Oregon State and Washington State go to the Mountain West, which is free agents, they can. Right. Does CBS and Fox want to ante up an extra $10 million per year to cover it? I mean, those are big questions. So again, Mountain West schools get about $5 million per year in media rights. There's three years to go in that deal. The American Conference pays about $7 million per school, but they actually have 10 years remaining on their deal with ESPN. So what do you want to do? What can you do? And there's the A5 status. Pac-12 does have A5 status. Automatic qualifier. Is it possible for them to merge with the Mountain West? Have the Mountain West commissioner, who used to be the assistant commissioner of the uh, Pac-12, take over and run it, because I don't think there'd be an appetite for keeping, with all due respect, to George Klyovkov right now, unless he can pull a rabbit out of the hat and pull off a merger while still keeping A5 status? Or does the college football playoff revamp and say, hey, look, there are four automatic qualifiers now, plus the fifth being group group of six. It's no longer group of five. You'd be group of six. You'd be knocked down a peg. And there'll be seven um, 
at-large teams, which then go to 12 at-large teams if they go to 16. And as Tony said, you know, we point out that when Penn State beat Utah, that was the last ever traditional Rose Bowl. I'm getting all sorts of texts today. This one's from Tom Bradley. <laughs> By the way, Tom is going to be the honorary captain, I believe, for the uh, opener with West Virginia, which is so great. He says, I don't know if you remember me, but my name is Tom Bradley. I used to coach at Penn State. I went to the same high school as Jack Ham and Rob Moeller. <laughs> oh, I see. He wants to get... Once to get Luke to cut his lawn. That's great. Good. Works for me. He'll be excited to do it. Tom doesn't pay. Uh, so <laughs> That's okay. He'll still do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um... So... Uh, so we'll see what they what they want to do with this. Um, I mean, their options are limited. Uh, and they uh, they don't have a lot of leverage. Now Oregon State's great in baseball. Oregon State has been in, in basketball except for the one run they made to the Elite Eight. But remember, they went through and won the Pac-12 tournament. That's how they got into the tournament because they were a 500 team. The next year, Penn State played them down in uh, Destin, and Penn State blew them out, Oregon State. Uh, Oregon State's very good in football this year. They're ranked 18th to start the season. Washington State, you know, look, when they had Mike Leach, they, they were doing really well. Um, they're doing really well. But then Mike Leach ended up taking the Mississippi State job, and of course we all know Mike has since passed away. Um, but Washington State's doing no better than hanging in there. Cal is, and I didn't bring this up with Tony, but I believe that the numbers I've seen, I believe Cal, like the athletic department, is like $400 million in debt. A lot of that's because of the stadium. And people aren't going to the game anyway. Remember I pointed out, everybody keeps talking about the, the big Cal-UCLA rivalry. And this this came up a lot when um, the California Board of Regents was discussing UCLA's move to the Big Ten. And I made the point. I said, you know, I said, do you know what the attendance was at the last big Cal-UCLA rivalry game? It's 35,000. Like, come on. Really? Really? Stanford has done well in football for years, but in the last few years they've fallen off, and Stanford is not actively has not been actively involved in NIL or anything like that. And everything has fallen off where they have a new coach, they have any of their recruiting's been good this year, but they have fallen off after a long period of time. And the part that got me about the Notre Dame deal. Oops, let me see what you got here. Oh. Was their long standing rivals. They played 35 times. I mean, to me, a long standing rival is like between 80 and 100. All right, we'll get to Neil Kulong in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. All right, we're going to have a limited time here with Neil, but I'll take any time I can get. Sir, welcome. I apologize for the, the delay on the start, but I'm good to go here. Good. No, that's fine. Hey, whenever I can get you, I'll take you. Uh, preseason one in the books. What did you learn? I think we, we learned we saw the, the benefits of the depth the Steelers have added uh, in the last couple drafts. They had a lot of hey, – I, I saw a lot of athleticism. I saw a lot of explosion. Um, a lot of guys all over on both sides of the ball that, that can make plays 
uh, on the field. I don't know how much you really want to take away from a preseason game, but when the rubber meets the road, it's athletic competition, and we saw uh, several younger guys uh, getting the best of their their counterparts. I mean, it, uh, uh, Nick Herbig is probably the one that stood out the most, and you, you've probably seen him play a lot more than I have, but I don't know if he ended the career in that right tackle or not, but he, he beat that guy on every play. I mean, it was it wasn't even close. I don't know if he's a a, a year one uh, producer for the Steelers, but you have to like that kind of explosion, that kind of get off. Um, we saw good things from Kenny Pickett. I think that um, you look at a player like that in the second year, you wanted to see that kind of performance from him. Um, I know the touchdown pass was was probably more run after the catch than anything, but that was a great sure. throw. Uh, he put it yes, right it where was. he needed to. Um, it looked like it had a little more velocity than I'm used to seeing uh, out of Kenny Pickett. So, um, I, it, it, an encouraging game in a lot of uh, a lot of ways. I mean, perhaps not so much the, uh, <laughs> the unfortunate debut of another Big Ten guy, Tanner Morgan, but uh, no. I, I don't think anybody really views him as a legitimate, you know, roster hopeful. Um, things kind of fell apart when he went in the game, but you, you saw good things out of uh, key players. Uh, Keanu Benton, I thought, looked fantastic. Uh, that, that that's a guy they expect to, to play um, pretty early on in his career. Uh, the defensive line in general, the Marvin Leal, I thought they had another great preseason game um, going into his second year. Uh, it, some some great things all around. I thought it, you know it's it's it, it's good to see them uh, bolstering the depth that they had to replenish just a couple of years ago when they weren't playing like this. Uh, in a preseason game, in fact, I'd say they even look more like the Bucks <laughs> than than they yeah. would have uh, the the twenty twenty three Steelers. Uh, Anthony Richardson's already been named the starting quarterback for the Colts, uh, and Brock Purdy, according to Kyle Shanahan, would have to faint on the field to lose the job to Trey Lance in San Francisco. It's an, it's interesting with young quarterbacks, isn't it? It it is. Um... The word choice that Shanahan used, I thought, was really interesting. We, we looked over that this morning um, before we, we wrote up that story. It, it was it, that's pretty concrete. I mean, usually you you tend to kind of find coaches will play it coy if they're talking about it, or they will do exactly what Shane Sykin did and just announce the guy uh, as your starter. I thought that yeah. Shanahan did everything he possibly could except announce him. And you've seen a lot of buzz lately uh, from from media types, and a few have had inside sources that really don't paint an optimistic picture picture for Trey Lance uh, starting that Week One game against Pittsburgh. I I was surprised, honestly. And yes, part of this is you know as an NDSU alum, I would have thought that uh, you know Trey Lance by now would have at least been an All Pro player, but uh, apparently he's just not getting it done. And it, it's not. It, it, I understand why Shanahan would hype up. Uh, Brock Purdy a bit, um, you know. Post injury, he's their guy. He's done a lot for them, but it, it's really surprising to me that they would, um, you know, all but name him to be, to be their starter uh, in in an open competition between a healthy, you know, healthy-ish uh, Purdy and I, I would think anyway a healthy Lance. Uh, for that not to have happened, I think is kind of a surprise to me. If that is in fact it's the direction that Kyle Shanahan wants to go. Uh, as far as- goes I, I think we'll, we'll see a lot of interesting things uh from him as the season goes on but uh, i i enjoy watching him play i think that's probably the right move in indianapolis this is a couple year rebuild for them and a lot of good things that he can do on the field i know it was a short window but it was still worth it thank you so much my friend definitely thanks for having me guys